Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take a look at light or electromagnetic radiation in general and what it really is. So we had some idea already that we knew it was electromagnetic radiation. It emanates from objects because the material that objects are made of, they're made up of atoms, and the atoms are charged particles, and the charged particles vibrate at very high frequencies, which cause electric fields around to vibrate back and forth, and that vibration electric field causes the field to emanate in a wave-like pattern out into infinity, and so that's called electromagnetic radiation. But back in 1905, Albert Einstein received the Nobel Prize for the photoelectric effect experiment. That experiment proved, without a doubt, that light was made up of quantized pieces of particles of energy. Light wasn't just this continuous stream of electromagnetic radiation as we thought, although in many ways we can think of it as such, and that's still a valid way of looking at light or electromagnetic radiation, but we also now must look at light and electromagnetic radiation in terms of it being what we call quantized. We can say that light is made up of small little energetic particles called photons. Again, they have no mass, they move at the speed of light, and they contain within them a quantized amount of energy. We can say light is quantized. What does that really mean? Well, let's try to get a feel for it. First of all, let's say we have the sun that's shining, the sun rays are coming away from the sun, we know that's electromagnetic radiation. If we look at a sun ray very closely, we can actually think of it as being made, made up of an almost infinite number of small little particles called photons. When I say infinite, of course, that's not true, it's not infinite, but there's so many of them. There's many, many trillions and trillions of these particles. Trillions times trillions of particles streaming at us from the sun, small little pieces of energy. If we look at one of those, we can call that a package of energy called a photon. And we also discovered that a photon has a specific amount of energy depending upon the wavelength or the frequency of that photon. We knew that the energy contained within a single package like that, a single photon, was equal to some constant times the frequency of that photon. And that constant is now known as Planck's constant, who was one of the principal physicists who came up with this concept and this idea. That concept, that uh, constant now is, is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. A very, very tiny number. Notice minus 34. Now, if we multiply that times the frequency, let's say, of visible light, the typical frequency of visible light is about 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz, or cycles per second. We come up with an energy for a single photon of almost about 4 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, which is 2.48 electron volts. Electron volts is a term we use a lot because it's a lot simpler to talk about something like this than to talk about something like this. So a typical photon of light contains about 2.5 electron volts. Now, since light varies from 700 nanometers for red light, lower frequencies, lowest energy level, to 400 nanometers for the bluish purplish light, which has a higher energy, you can see that photons of light vary in energy from 1.77 electron volts to 3.10 electron volts, and of course, everything in between. So it's kind of an interesting concept. What is a photon? Well, it turns out that a photon carries a single amount of energy, and when a photon hits something, that photon either ricochets off, scatters off, reflects off, or gets absorbed by the object it hits. When it gets absorbed, the, the photon ceases to exist. All the energy, 100% of what it contained, is completely absorbed by the object in it. So when we receive sunlight, you can think of it in terms of being hit by just trillions and trillions of photons, each photon hitting our skin, either the skin absorbs it, we get warmer, or it ricochets off of our skin and goes scatter somewhere else. I'm sure it does a little bit of both, but again, the way energy is being transported on electromagnetic radiation is in terms of a ton, of just an enormous amount of small little energetic particles called photons that carry the energy from the sun to other places or from any object to any other object, because since everything radiates, everything emits photons of a particular frequency and of a particular wavelength. Now, if you remember the equation that said that uh, the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, which means that we can write the frequency as being the ratio of the speed of light divided by the wavelength. We can also turn, think of it in terms of the energy of a photon, not in terms of its frequency, but in terms of its wavelength. So we can write that the energy of a photon can also be written as h, and instead of the frequency, we can divide, we can multiply times c over f, or c over lambda, so we can write hc divided by lambda, because 
H times F is the same as saying, um, where am I here? Okay, H times F is the same thing as saying H times C over lambda since F is C over lambda. So you can write the energy of a photon in those terms as well. That makes it very interesting. So when we talk about watching or, or observing things with a telescope, and we want a big lens on the telescope, a big mirror on the telescope, we want it because we want to absorb or we want to receive as many photons as possible. Pictures will become clearer, pictures will become uh, more precise and uh, with higher resolution if we collect more photons. It's all about photons. Photons is what makes the energy in the universe. And how do we know that? Well, Einstein proved it using the photoelectric effect back in the early part of the, night of the 20th century. Maybe one way we can think about photons is making an analogy to matter in general. Let's say that you take a glass, and you have a pitcher of water, and you pour water in the glass. We think of that as a continuous stream of water going into the glass. But when you really think of it, when you think at small enough terms, it's actually little pieces of water, little chunks of water, because water is made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen. So it's basically little chunks of water going in your glass. But since there's so many of them, they're so small together, they look like it's a continuous stream of water going to your glass when it's actually quantized. Matter is quantized. And in the very same way that matter is quantized, energy is quantized or electromagnetic radiation is quantized into small little chunks of energy called photons, each carrying a very specific amount of energy. And that's figured out by saying it's H times the frequency or it's Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength of that radiation. Now you know what photons are, and now you look at electromagnetic radiation in a very different sense.